Our help is in the name of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. world without end. Amen. To thee we come, O Lord our God. Before thine altar, Father, come no best our yearning hearts. This supplication answer, lift up from what thy people, Lord, bless us and be seated. Today we are offering Holy Mass in the Contemporary Rite, and the Contemporary Rite begins on page 63. So with that being said, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us pause and make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins to God and asking for his forgiveness, let us now recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You have given my days a very short span. My life is as nothing before you. All mortal, mortals are but a breath. Anyone can see that the wise is God. The fool and the senseless pass away too, and must, must leave, leave their wealth to others. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please be seated. Let us pray. Father of the fatherless, be compassionate toward those who are careless about eternal things. 
who live without you and without hope. Send them the light of your Holy Spirit that they may seek the things that are above where neither moth consumes nor rust destroys. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Vincent, will you please proclaim the word? from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says Koalet. Vanity of vanities, all things are vanity. Here is one who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill, and yet to another who has not labored at all. Who has not labored over it, he must leave property. This also is vanity and a great misfortune. For what profit comes to a man from all the toil and anxiety of heart with which he has labored under the sun? All his days, sorrow and grief are his occupation. Even at night, his mind is not at rest. This also is vanity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You turn back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday now that it is past, or is a watch of the night. If today you hear my voice, pardon not your hearts. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wills and fades. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord. How long? Have pity on your servants. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. And may the precious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. <coughs> A reading from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of, think of what is above and not on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Put to death, then, the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another, since you've taken off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being created for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, not circumcision and uncircumcision, not barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, for Christ is all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My life is worn out by sorrow, my ears by sighing, my strength fails in affliction, my bones are consumed. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. For where your treasure is, there also will be your heart. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do, for I do not have space to store my harvest? And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods, and I shall say to myself, Now... As for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. And the things you have prepared to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasure for themselves but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. What does, it a prof what does it profit a man to gain the whole world yet lose his soul? Or what price do you put on one's soul? These words are taken from the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, gathered in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We read in the four Gospels of Jesus Christ the importance of seeking first the kingdom of God. Today's Gospel speaks of the uncertainty of life and the futile efforts of building of treasures on earth. You know, when Jesus came, it was what we call the apocalyptic times. Many who saw Jesus and believed that Jesus was the Messiah believed that God would establish his kingdom on earth. And many saw what, what we refer to as the end of days. But following the three and a half years of the ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and following his passion, death by crucifixion, and then his glorious ascension, the end times had not come. There were those who believed that maybe Jesus was not the Messiah. Because according to the Hebrew uh, prophecies, the Messiah would first of all be a high priest, of which we read in the epistle of St. Paul to the Hebrews, in which St. Paul speaks of the order of Melchizedek. The second aspect of the Messiah was that he was to be a prophet. And Jesus, following John the Baptist, prophesied as in today's gospel. 
The third aspect of being the Messiah was that the Messiah would be a king. And this is where there was a little bit of confusion. On Palm Sunday, how did Jesus come in to Jerusalem? They said if Jesus was to be that king, he would be the one that would overthrow Rome and that he would come on a, a white horse and declare that the kingdom of God was to be established on earth. But how did Jesus come into Jerusalem? On a beast of burden. And so there were many who just said, not this time, because there were many who came before Jesus and came after Jesus, where they thought, here's the Messiah. But you know, a lot of people miss the whole point is that Jesus came not to establish an earthly kingdom. He will come again, and at that time he will. But what did he say to his disciples? The kingdom of God is within. And th for the three and a half years that he taught and healed and shared the wisdom of God, Jesus spoke about the importance of discerning of what is temporal, and what is spiritual. Any one of us who reads from Holy Scripture sees many, many of the references that Jesus speaks about, about putting things not on the earth or earthly things or physical things or temporal things, but rather, what did he say? Uh, what rather did he say? Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where thieves cannot come and break in and steal or where rust corrupts but store things in heaven where thieves cannot break in and steal, where rust cannot corrupt. You know, we are reminded of the words of Jesus found in Matthew 6, 24. Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will cleave to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, God and wealth, God and money, God and worldly things. In today's gospel, Jesus tells us about the parable of a man who needed to construct larger barns to hold all of his possessions. The reality of man's futility of never having enough is found at the end of this parable when God says to man, when he says to each and every single one of us, you fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. And thus, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? We used to have a, a standing joke that you never saw an armored car follow a hearse. And so what are the things? We come into the world by ourselves with no money, and more times than not, we are called back by God at the time we do not appoint, but rather when God decides. In this parable, Jesus says, Thus will it be for all who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich, and what matters to God? You know, I've read time and time again of people that have acquired wealth, and yet they're not happy. Think about the individual, the sole ticket that was sold in Illinois of the individual that won something like $1.1 billion. You know, I've heard where people have won millions and tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions. And many of those that have acquired the wealth in the end have lost everything. And they lost one more thing. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? You know, in life, 
we see the selfishness and the greed. Jesus says, don't be like them, but rather store up for yourself those things that are spiritual. I talked briefly before we began Holy Mass that when you ask the Lord to come into your life, you don't have him come into your life halfway. You ask him to come into your entire life, your entire being, and you kind of say something like, you know, Lord, all these years, you know, I've sought for happiness, whatever would make one happy. But now I realize that I can't do it by myself, and I need you to come into my life. There are those that would say and look at a person like that and would say, you know, you're a fool. You know, God doesn't exist. Eternal life doesn't exist. What you read in Holy Scriptures is but a story. Well, as I said before Mass, there are times that God comes and he kind of taps us on the shoulder and he lets us know that I am near, I am with you. And the minute we turn ourselves over to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we put everything in his hands. And so, we see in this society that has been referred to as the doggy dog, where everybody looks out for themselves, we still see many, many examples of people during tragedy, during casualties, where they actually come out of themselves and they don't think so much about themselves, but they think about others and helping others. This is what is meant by putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that Nicodemus was a very, very um, intellectual individual who knew the Mosaic law. And he came to Jesus one evening and he said, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And what does Jesus say? I tell you a truth that you must be reborn of water and of spirit. Being reborn, as we read in today's second reading, that the old self must die, our old ways must die, all those things that we thought brought us happiness must be done away with. It is only when we put on the new self and putting on the Lord Jesus. That's what is meant when we say that we ask Christ to come into our hearts. And once that happens, a person in their sincerity of asking the Lord to come into their hearts are never the same. And so, my brothers and sisters, may we reflect upon our finality. We don't know from an hour or a minute, or even a second, what God intends for us. None of us can actually say right now, I'm going to live for another year, or six months, or a month, or a week, because everything is in the hands of God, and it is in, in Him whom we trust, and we put our trust. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Nyek bencha pofaloni Jesus Christus. I be he leaving one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit 
the Lord and giver of light, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please be seated. Today we offer our prayers of intention and the response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the hungry and the homeless and the unemployed. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray this day for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, and we pray not only for them, but also for their families. We also give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors and nurses, first responders, and health care workers. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as all abused and neglected animals, and all victims of violence both here and abroad. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for world peace. We remember the people in Ukraine who suffer, as well as all those who suffer from lack of food and proper shelter. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for the Polish National Catholic Church, for holy name of Jesus, for all the congregants and for all their loved ones, that the blessings and the graces of God may be with all of them. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal Father, accept the prayers that we offer to you this day and grant unto us the graces that we need that we may truly be united with you. Let us pray. All man's work will perish in decay. All his handiwork will follow after him. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this prayer to Which I was given. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in the memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we offer these gifts to you from whom all good things come. Grant us the grace to wisely use all your gifts to us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ <coughs> our Lord. You who send us an advocate and a counselor in the person of the Holy Spirit to support us, teach us, and make us holy. Through your Holy Spirit, you give your grace, gifts of grace in every time and season, and as a guide for your holy church. Therefore, we he join this day with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. This morning, we will offer the Eucharistic <coughs> prayer number five, found on page 92 of the Mass Service booklets, which is the canon of the Union of Utrecht. Blessed are you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercy and God of all consolation, for you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He then established a lasting memorial of your salvation on the evening in which he willingly surrendered himself. He took bread, gave you thanks, blessed it, broke it, saying, take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup. In the same way he gave you thanks, blessed it, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So we recall before you, Father, the incarnation of your Son, his words and deeds, how he humbled himself and obediently accepted death, even death on the cross. Therefore you have raised him up and given him a name which is above every name, so that in heaven and under the earth every knee shall bow, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. We offer this sacrifice of your Son before you, Father, with praise and thanksgiving, and ask that you accept this oblation. Send your Holy Spirit and fill these gifts with his life-giving power, that they may be for us the body and blood of your dearly beloved Son. Grant that the bread which we break may be the body of our Lord, and the cup over which we give thanks may be one with the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the company of Mary, the mother of God, with your apostles and martyrs, with Holy Hillebrood and all the saints, together with Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, 
and with all bishops, priests, and deacons, as well as your whole church, we praise and glorify you and look forward to the coming of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the <coughs> unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father. Oh, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Please be seated. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? For because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And now let us share with one another a sign of peace. And now, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Let us pray together the first communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. My brothers and sisters, those of you who will not be receiving the Holy Eucharist sacramentally, let us now recite the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
we will take the bread of heaven, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, for you shall be filled. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Natalie, receive the Lord. Jesus Christ. Liam, may the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you.
man's works will perish in decay. Do not store for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and decay destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up treasures in heaven where neither moth nor decay destroy, nor thieves break in and steal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, you give us the strength of new life by the gift of the Eucharist. Protect us with your love and help us to store up our eternal treasure in heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon each of you and all your loved ones. And may the grace of our Lord always remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and let us serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks God. God. From whom all blessings flow, praise him all creatures here below, praise him above ye heavenly hosts, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated for another moment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.